One problem with making your own water slide deck house is you can't print white with a domestic inkjet or laser printer. But in this video I want to share a method to get the next nearest thing. Obviously this isn't an issue if you've got a white surface, or even something quite pale, which we'll show through when using a transparent deco. But what about a dark surface, or a design that has white in it? How is that going to work? Here's the answer, or at least half the answer. White deco paper. The only problem being that that's white outside the design as well as inside, so we're going to have to cut them out, and that's going to be difficult to do accurately. Which brings us to the other half of the solution, an identical sheet of logos printed on clear paper and we're going to use both of them, or at least two or three from each. Most decal paper comes in A4 sheets, which for economy we want to use as much as possible. I've filled mine with a couple of variations of Castrol logos from different eras, but I'm just going to use the 1958 ones, trimming a set from each sheet, making sure I don't scratch the others with my ruler. Even then I've got loads. With a bit of planning it would have been more economical to come up with a mixed sheet for several projects, but at least I've got plenty in case I mess anything up. Now, as well as transparent and white, decal paper comes in inkjet or laser print compatible, and you can see the merits of both, along with the different application techniques in another of my videos. The big difference is for inkjet, you have to seal the surface to prevent the water-based ink from running, but I've discovered it's really worth doing even with laser prints, which is what I've got here, as the surface is very prone to scratching or chipping. So I'm giving my decals a very fine airbrushed coating of satin acrylic varnish, thinned down a little for an almost invisible coat. I've tried using aerosols, but I don't seem to be able to get the surface anywhere near fine enough. And unlike inkjet, where you really need to build up an impenetrable surface with multiple layers of spray, it's only a fine coating I need, just enough to protect the toner on the white and the transparent decals. But if you're sealing inkjet, remember to build up the layers gradually, so you avoid the print bleeding then leave to dry, after which we can crack on with application, starting with the white so we can put the clear to one side. My subject is a 1959 Thornycroft tanker, so a perfect fit to the era of my logo, one of which I'm snipping out from my decal sheet with a pair of scissors, then trimming down to a square, leaving a reasonable amount around the edges of my design. Now we're going to cut it out, and for this we'll need a very sharp knife, preferably with a brand new blade. This would be straightforward enough if our logo was square, but it isn't, and this is where my lamination technique comes in. I'm cutting my white decal inside the outline. The transparent one will be cut outside the edge of the design and layered on top. This means, while I have to be reasonably precise, I don't have to be 100% accurate, which would be really difficult to do with a circle, let alone anything more complicated. Notice I'm not cutting right through the paper, just the surface of the decal. This means I need to use much less pressure, and I can keep the tip of the knife on the paper, gradually turning it as I go round, making it easier to stay inside the line. You can also see how little the toner is chipping. This would be a very different story if I hadn't lacquered it first. And when we get to the end of our cut, we just need to make sure it joins the beginning. Finally, two extra cuts, from the outline to the edge of the paper, so we can float off the two halves of the outside of the decal. Now to apply it to the tanker popping it into a saucer of water in the usual way. And while it's loosening from the backing sheet, we can prepare the surface, which I've already made sure is completely clean and free from grease. Because I'm going to be laminating two decals on top of each other, I need to make absolutely sure that the bottom one is completely fixed. Otherwise, it's going to move when I try and put the top one on. So I'm just brushing the surface with some decal fix to ensure it stays in place. Then when that and my decal are ready, I can guide it to the edge of the saucer where I can carefully brush away the surplus background, just sliding it off either side, leaving the bit I do need, which, still on the backing sheet, I can transfer to my model. And when roughly in the right place, slide off with the help of a soft brush, which can also be used to manoeuvre the decal without damaging the surface, just edging it into place and making any fine adjustments. Then we can mop up some of the water and remove the surplus decal fix before tweaking the final position with a dry, fine-tipped brush. Then, being very careful not to move it, dab the surface with a cotton bud to ensure it's perfectly adhered to the model and there are no air bubbles or ripples. Finally, I'm very carefully brushing a little bit of the decal fix on top of the surface, paying particular attention to the edges, which will help smooth it into the side of the model, ready for the clear decal to go on top. But not just yet, because, and this is really important, we've got to let it set properly, otherwise it will be loosened by the wet, transparent one. So we must leave it to dry, preferably overnight. Now we come to phase two, applying our clear one, 
which we're going to do in pretty much the same way as the white, starting by snipping it out of the sheet with scissors. Then onto the fine scalpel work. This time we're cutting around the design, leaving about a millimetre of the transparent decal around the edge. Again just cutting through the surface, and not the entire thickness of the paper, so we've got maximum control over our scalpel tip. I'm doing this by eye, but as our transparent decal film will largely disappear, 100% accuracy isn't required. But as we want as little as possible around the edge, once again I'm going to remove the surplus, making the extra cut so I can float off the sides, then into the water. This time I'm not using the decal fix, as there's a danger this will soften the first one, but otherwise the procedure's the same, although removing the surplus is a little bit tricky because it's quite hard to see, and with that out of the way we can slide the transfer into place. Now we've got to line them up. This was made slightly more complicated, as I found it didn't want to slide easily with brushing alone, but with a little bit of help with a fingertip and my dry pointy brush, I eventually got it in the right place. Now to mop up the excess water, preferably without moving our carefully lined up decals, but even if you nudge them a bit, you've still got time to realign. Now I want to make my transparent rim as discreet as possible, and for this I'm using a setting solution. I don't actually know how different this is from the decal fix, but it does seem to blend in the edges, which I'm carefully dabbing with a cotton bud until the transparent film virtually disappears, which will look even better when it's dry. The decals for the side of my tanker are relatively large, but what about something quite a bit smaller, like the one for the back? The outline is obviously quite a bit narrower, so quite a bit more difficult to keep the knife inside. And as you can see, even though I've come perilously close to the edges of the white areas, they're still intact. It really doesn't matter if the black outline is a bit ragged, that'll be covered up by the clear decal, which we can apply when this one is properly dry. The other challenge as we go smaller is that everything gets progressively more difficult to line up, and a fraction of a millimetre's difference will be quite obvious, making our decal look blurry. The trick is to take your time, gradually adjusting the position, and not worrying too much if you knock it out of alignment as you can always get it back again, even at the late stages of the process. And we finish up exactly as before, removing any excess water and a final application of the setting solution. And that's how you do it, a decal with white, without any fancy equipment. But there is one last technique I'd like to share, and that's to change the outline colour to that of the model. The colour itself requires quite a bit of trial and error, tweaking the colour values in your software. You'll need to do some test prints, but just use regular paper until you're pretty near, and you might want to do some variations on the same sheet. But there comes a point where you have to commit and print on the decal paper itself. The line can also be a little bit wider, which will obviously make cutting out a bit easier, particularly on small items. But it really is only when we've applied the decal that we find out how close our colour match is. And we're going to do that in exactly the same way as previously, starting with the white, floating it off of the backing sheet and onto the decal fixed prepared surface, adjusting the position with our brush, making sure it's central on the side of the tanker, and straight, which is actually a bit tricky with our zigzaggy logo. When it is, we can pat it dry and give the surface the decal fixed treatment, particularly around the edges. Our colour match seems pretty good, but we'll have to wait for the transparent decal before we really know, and that'll have to be tomorrow, when we can go through the now familiar process, trimming the decal around the outside, trying to get as close to the green line as possible, and discarding the surplus before sliding onto the tanker, where we can manoeuvre into place until it's bang on top of the other one, the centres of some of the letters being a good guide for accuracy, and then a little bit of setting solution, just around the edge, to blend the decal film the best we can. And even though our colour match isn't perfect, I'm pretty happy with the results. I'm going to show that you can get white in your decals, even with a bog standard domestic printer. All it requires is a bit of skill and lots of patience.